Today, we are going to be talking about how to modify the Mavic Air 2 remote controller with the Alien Tech antenna modification. You will be getting the bracket, install cables, and tool kit pictured along with your Mavic Air 2 antenna to install inside of your Mavic Air 2 remote. The two install cables, the bracket, and the tool kit are all included with your purchase of the antenna. So let's get started. First, we are going to start by removing the bottom white sticker that is around the bottom USB-C charge port. Next, there are two hidden screws in where the joystick holders are, as pictured. Next, at the top where the rubber part meets the back plastic half of the remote controller, there are two hidden screws inside of this rubber that also need to be removed, as shown. Next, after these two screws have been removed, we are going to start moving on to the bottom where we are going to begin with the needle nose pliers and we are going to start separating the remote controller as pictured. You can see as the needle nose pliers are twisting, they're separating the case halves of the remote controller. Next, we are moving around with our flat head screwdriver around the remote as pictured. Make sure you do not stick the flathead screwdriver too far into the remote control as there are electronics that can be damaged by doing this. As you can see, we removed those two screws that were hidden in the rubber and we are now separating the remote control. Do not tear the remote control two halves apart forcefully because there are still connectors on the inside of the remote that are still connected and that will be broken if you pull too hard. As you can see, we are working the two case halves of the remote apart as pictured and we are not using a ton of force when doing this. Make sure that you remove the two internal cables that are connected to the joysticks as you can see there, we are taking our tweezers and we are removing the little white connector on each side that is connecting the joysticks to the back half circuit board of the remote controller. As you can see that we are just working the connector back and forth until it is removed. Now with the two connectors undone, you can see that the remote is separated. As you can see, there are four screws in this metal shielding that will need to be removed. Take note of where the switch is and where you the black knob will need to go back into that recess in that front switch when you put the face back on. Now we are going to remove the four black screws that are holding the metal shielding on that will expose the next part of this process that we need to remove. As you can see, there's a blue thermal paste that will suction, and so it will feel like it is still staying on there, but after the four screws are removed, it will come off. Next, we are now to the IPEX connectors where the antennas are hooked onto the circuit board. As you can see, we're taking care, pushing upwards and not at any other angle when removing the IPEX connectors. Next, we will remove the pl plastic clear shield that is over the antenna wires. And all we will do is tuck the antenna wires back in so that the mod can be reversed if we wanted to, if we decide at a later date that we want to keep our antenna for another drone so we can return it back to stock. As you can see, that's all we've done here. 
you're not actually removing the antennas as they are part of the phone clamp and the top end of the remote. There will be a small bracket that you will be receiving with your antenna kit. This small silver bracket is going to need to be replaced in order to make this kit work. We are now just separating the black bracket that is held onto the front face of the remote in between the joysticks as pictured. We need to remove the black bracket and now we are going to remove the thermal tape and we are going to put it on the other silver bracket and basically all we are doing is transferring anything that was on our old bracket onto our new bracket as pictured. Now as you can see it will be a perfect fit back in the spot where we took our black bracket out of. We will not be using that black bracket again. Now we have our silver bracket back installed inside the remote. Now we will be assembling back the remote with our QMA jacks. The next part of this process, as you can see, there will be a black bracket that will now come out of the back of the remote and this will hold our QMA jacks. We will undo the back nut as shown and we will feed the cable inside our black bracket and we will screw our nut on the other side and this is what holds our jack in place. Take care not to tighten this too tight. This is just a plastic bracket, injection molded bracket, and this does not need to be extremely tight, just snug. We will do this for both of our cables as shown here. Now with both of our cables installed, we will install the black bottom cover that covers the bottom of the QMA jacks to keep everything nice and hidden and look professional. We will now install our black bracket over the phone clamp as pictured. As you can see, it will be a perfect fit around the phone clamp. Do not force, pull, or push this into place as it is an exact fit part that will fit perfectly inside the remote. This is the part that holds our IPEX connectors as well. We are going to put our silver bracket in place now, as pictured. And you can see that now the two halves are starting to look like they are coming together as they should. Now, we need to make sure where our cables are going to be run. This is very, very key. As you can see, they are going to pass through the small opening in the silver bracket as shown here in the picture. This is very, very important that you feed these cables through that silver bracket. As if you do not, they will be pinched when you push the top half of the remote back together. As you can see, please take note of where we are also running the cables after they are leaving the silver bracket. Now as you can see, we are screwing our silver bracket in place while we are holding it. And this is what holds our silver bracket in place. Now you can see that the internal cables have been run inside the remote. There are two screws on the top that need to be tightened back down and that's what holds that in place. Now we are going to push our IPEX connectors onto the circuit board in the back half of the remote. Take care also in doing this as if you go on at any angle other than straight up and down you will ruin the board and it will be damaged. As you can see, we are just taking the back end of our tweezers and we're pushing them on just like so. You will hear a snap 
when you get them correctly on. They will click, snap, etc. Now we will put our silver face plate back on with the four screws as pictured. This is our cover that covers the IPEX connectors. Now we have our silver connector and everything run inside the remote. We will now connect our joystick connections as shown. They can only go in one way. And so this is a very easy part to do. As you can see, we're just going to push them back into place and they will snap back in. Now that we have those connected back in, we're going to put the front face of the remote back on. Take key of where our switch is as there is only one notch in this switch where this will fit. If it's in the middle, it needs to stay in the middle as shown. As long as that is in the correct spot, our face plate will snap back on just as shown perfectly. We will now insert back in our joystick holders as shown and we will finish snapping on the face and make sure that everything is snug and tight. We will now install the bottom cover that covers the QMA jacks on the bottom. And this will be screwed in with the supplied screws and we will screw these in just like so. There will be two screws. Now we have our bottom cover in. We are now going to install back in the two hidden screws in the joystick holder rubber as shown. We will now lift the top rubber up that exposed those hidden screws and we are now going to screw in those two screws as well. And these are the screws that are holding on the front face of the remote controller. As you can see, we are able to maneuver our screwdriver inside that hidden rubber. Now we will screw on the bottom portion of the bottom bracket that was covering our QMA jacks. Now that that is finished and we have our screws back in, we're going to make sure that everything is snug and tight, but not too tight as it is plastic. We're going to make sure our switch works correctly and that our remote powers up. As you can see, it does. And now we are ready to install our Alien Tech antenna on the Mavic Air 2 remote as shown. Please take note of where the phone clamp is sitting. It also does not hinder or interfere with where that is sitting. And as you can see, the antenna is able to tilt and move and it pops off just like so. This will conclude our Mavic Air 2 remote controller install.